The last five years have witnessed a renaissance in vitamin D research, which in large part has sought to define a broader role for vitamin D in human health. Perhaps the best example of this is the interaction between vitamin D and the immune system, and in particular the potential benefits of vitamin D supplementation in promoting antibacterial immunity. Humans obtain most of their vitamin D from the action of sunlight on skin to produce vitamin D3, although it is possible to obtain some vitamin D from dietary sources. Once in the circulation, vitamin D undergoes two metabolic conversions. The first in the liver generates 25-hydroxyvitamin D, or 25D, which is the main circulating form of vitamin D. The second metabolic step occurs in the kidneys and converts 25D to 125-dihydroxyvitamin D, 125D, the active hormonal form of vitamin D that drives its effects on calcium homeostasis and bone metabolism. An important point to note is that these endocrine skeletal actions are relatively insensitive to changes in vitamin D status because production of 125D from 25D is tightly controlled by other hormones such as parathyroid hormone and FGF23, which transcriptionally regulate renal expression of the vitamin D activating enzyme 1-alpha-hydroxylase, also known as CYP27B1. However, we know that for many people, serum 25D concentrations can vary considerably depending on UV exposure as a consequence of geographical location, dress codes, and social habits. So how might these variations in vitamin D status influence human health? Our group and others have proposed that an explanation for this stems from the observation that the vitamin D activating enzyme CYP27B1 is not only found in the kidney but is also expressed by other peripheral tissues. As such, many cell types may be able to convert 25D to 125D locally. As most of these cells also express the nuclear vitamin D receptor, they will then be able to respond to endogenously generated 125D via VDR-mediated regulation of gene transcription. So it is this intracrine rather than endocrine action of vitamin D that is thought to be central to many of the non-classical extraskeletal effects of vitamin D. This is perhaps best illustrated by the actions of vitamin D in the immune system. Almost all proliferating immune cells express the VDR, and cells from the innate immune system also express CYP27B1. As such, they are able to take precursor 25D and convert this locally to 125D and drive intracrine responses. In the case of macrophages, intracrine vitamin D stimulates expression of antibacterial proteins and enhances autophagy, with these activities cooperating to enhance intracellular killing of bacteria. In the case of dendritic cells, local synthesis of 125D inhibits cell maturation and acts to suppress antigen presentation. This is a potential mechanism by which vitamin D can mediate the interface between innate and adaptive immunity. In particular, recent studies have shown that intracrine metabolism of vitamin D in dendritic cells may be very important for the generation of tolerogenic regulatory T cells and the suppression of inflammatory Th17 cells. Macrophage antibacterial responses to vitamin D are highly dependent on the availability of substrate 25D for CYP27B1. However, many other factors can also influence this response. We know that vitamin D induction of some antibacterial proteins requires cooperativity with inflammatory factors such as NF-kappa B, possibly via the actions of cytokines such as interleukin-1, and possibly via intracellular pattern recognition receptors such as Nord2. Some cytokines from the adaptive immune system will enhance antibacterial responses to vitamin D, and others will suppress the effects of vitamin D. In the case of interleukin-4, its suppressive effect is not mediated via CYP27B1, but instead involves the vitamin D catabolic enzyme CYP24A1. In recent studies, we've also shown that factors from vitamin D's endocrine system, such as FGF23, can also influence the intracrine actions of vitamin D, in this case by suppressing vitamin D-induced antibacterial activity. Collectively, these observations suggest that the antibacterial effects of vitamin D are not exclusively dependent on 25D concentrations, but may also involve immune or disease-specific factors. What does all this mean for human health? Initial studies have focused on the impact of vitamin D on infectious diseases such as tuberculosis. In this case, there's an historical precedence in that Niels Finsen was awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine or Physiology in 1903 for showing that he could cure the epidermal form of TB, lupus vulgaris, by using concentrated light radiation. Of course, at the time, he was unaware that he was probably greatly enhancing the vitamin D status of his patients. Likewise, the sanatorium movement that was popular as TB therapy at the end of the 19th century and early 20th century involved outdoor activity at high altitudes, and this presumably was also conducive to enhanced vitamin D status. However, beyond TB, it's important to recognize that the same antibacterial responses to vitamin D have been reported for a wide variety of different cell types and disease models, and so it is possible that improved vitamin D status will have similar uh, wide-ranging benefits to human immune health. The big challenge now is to demonstrate this in large-scale human supplementation trials.